Welcome to another GNU Cash Quick Start tutorial. I'm Laura from the BusyBeatPost.com and in today's tutorial I will show you how to enter a simple transaction. We will begin with the equity opening balance since that should be the first transaction you enter. The method is the same for entering any other simple transactions. If you like my tutorials and find them helpful please subscribe and don't forget to give a thumbs up. It lets me know the videos are helping. Let's begin. In this example, we will be entering what GNU Cash refers to as a simple transaction. I prefer in most cases when entering a simple transaction to work with the checking account register. But you don't necessarily have to enter your transactions that way. You can enter a transaction directly into a sub account if you prefer. I just find it easier to work with the checking account register. To begin, open up the checking account register by clicking on the triangle next to the assets account to open up the sub accounts, then click on the arrow next to current assets to open up the current assets sub accounts. There you will find the checking account. Double click on your checking account to open up the checking account register. In a double entry accounting system such as GNU Cash, a simple transaction involves two accounts. Unlike split transactions, which involves three or more accounts, which I will talk more about in the next video. A simple transaction consists of a to account and a from account. In this example, we will be working on the checking account and we will select a single remote account from the chart of accounts. To enter a simple transaction, we will begin with the equity opening balance since that should be the first transaction you enter. Entering your equity opening balance will assure your accounting records will balance with your business checking account. You only need to enter the equity opening balance transaction one time when you first start using the new cash. In this example, I'm entering information for a new business year. My ending balance from my last business checking account statement at the end of the year on December 31st was $500. Transactions are entered into an account register similar to the way you would enter information into a checkbook register. In the first field, enter the date of the transaction. By default, the current date is displayed. To change the date, click on the drop down arrow. If you don't see the drop down arrow, click inside the text box until you see the drop down arrow. Then click on the arrow to bring up the calendar. Click on the arrows at the top of the calendar to scroll through and select a month and year. And then select the day on the calendar that applies to the transaction you are entering. Next, move to the next text field box and the calendar automatically closes. Here you have the num field, which is short for number. This field is optional. One example of when you may want to enter a number here is when you pay with a check. And in that case, you have the option of entering the check number here. In the description field, you can enter information that describes the transaction, but do note that descriptions are optional. If you're like me, when I first read that the descriptions are optional, I was puzzled. I figured a description is one of the most important things you would enter since it is important to be prepared with an explanation of what a business transaction is for. But I believe one of the reasons that the description field is optional is because when you select an account in the transfer field from the chart of account that applies to this transaction, in many cases that may be the only descriptive information you need unless you have more detailed information to add. For instance, I'm entering the equity opening balance. I will enter the opening balance here in the description field. Next, I need to select which one of the chart of accounts this transaction applies to. In the transfer field, I will select an account by clicking on the drop down arrow. If you don't see the drop down arrow, just like with the calendar I talked about earlier, Click inside the text box until the arrow appears, then click on the arrow. This will bring up the menu you will use to select an account from the chart of accounts. Here I will select the equity opening balance account, which is the account this transaction applies to. Now maybe you're able to see why you may not necessarily need to enter a description since the selected account equity opening balance is specified in the transfer field, which explains what the transaction is for. 
One thing I would like to point out here. In the transfer field, as you can see, the chart of account list can get pretty long, which takes an extra minute or two when you have to search through the list for an account to apply to a transaction. One of the things you can do is instead of searching for the account, enter the first couple of letters or so of the account name you are searching for into the transfer field text box and GNU Cash's autofill feature will attempt to fill it in for you. For example, in this example, I was looking for the equity opening balance account. So instead of using the drop down arrow to select an account, I will enter the letter O and then P for the opening balance account and the equity opening balance account pops up. Now all I have to do is click on the account name or being that it's already highlighted, I can hit the enter key on my keyboard and the account is automatically entered into the transfer field text box. It can be a little time saver. Next you will enter the transaction amount. Think about this for a moment. Is it a deposit or a withdrawal? Any amount that adds value to a checking account of course would be a deposit and anything that takes money out of your account would be a withdrawal. As you can see, the program doesn't use debits and credits, which is the standard lingo for a double entry accounting system when entering transactions. By using deposits and withdrawals, they have simplified it for newbies, which is great. But if you prefer to use debits and credits, which is the standard accounting terms, there is an option to turn it on, which I will not go into at this time. Just note that the option is available. Next. I will enter the opening balance of $500 in the deposit field. Next, select the enter key by clicking on it on the toolbar to record the transaction. And don't forget to select on the toolbar, save, to save the changes. If you do forget, there is a good chance the program will remind you to save the changes. If not now, before you close out the program. I wouldn't bank on it. It's better to remember to save your changes. Now you can close out the checking account register window by clicking on the X on the right side of the checking account title tab. Back on the chart of accounts window, the equity opening balance and the assets accounts have changed to reflect the $500 opening balance transaction. And looking at the status bar, I can see the business net assets shows the business owns $500. And since the business hasn't earned any money, the profits is showing zero. Congratulations, you have just entered your first transaction. In the next tutorial, I will go over how to enter a split transaction.